Hi guys, in this video we're going to be looking at work done, work done by gravity, and we're going to finish with a summary. So first of all, we need to understand what work done actually is, how it's defined, and how we can calculate it. When a force acts on an object and makes it move, we say that work is done. So for example, if you were to push a box along the ground, we apply a force to it. So since you're applying a force to this box and causing it to move with a certain velocity v, we say that work is done on the box. For example, pushing a block along a surface requires work. So as we just said, if we apply a force to this block here in order to push it along a surface, we do work on it. So by applying the force, the block then moves with a certain velocity v. But in order for this to occur, work is required. We say that when the force does work on the block, energy is transferred to it. So when you apply the force to the block, we're transferring energy. So energy is transferred to the block, which is why it's then able to move. The work that is done on the block by the force is equal to the energy that is transferred to it. So we say that the work done on the block is equal to the energy that is transferred to it by pushing it. So when we apply a force to the block in order to move it, we transfer energy to it. And this energy transferred is what we call work done. This is the case whenever a force does work. There is an accompanying energy transfer equal to the work done. So this is always the case. Whenever we say that we're doing work on something, we say that the work done is equal to the energy transferred to the object. We calculate the work done by considering the force applied to the object and the distance the object moves in the direction of the force. So the two quantities we need to consider in order to calculate work done is the force we apply to the object, so we're going to call this force F, and also the distance that's moved by the object whilst we apply this force. So that's the distance and we're going to call this S. We can write this relation between work done, force applied and distance moved in direction of the force. So we say that the work done is equal to the force we apply multiplied by the distance moved in the direction of the force. So W is the work done and we give work done in joules because it's an energy transfer. Then we've got the force that's applied and this is the force applied in the direction of motion. And since this is a force, we give it in newtons. And finally, we have S, which is the distance moved in metres. Note, this equation only works when the force is acting along the direction of motion. So the force that we apply must act along the same direction that the object then moves in. So the force must be parallel to the direction of motion, otherwise this equation can't be used to calculate the work done. We can use this equation to define the unit of energy, which is the joule. One joule is defined as the work done when a force of one newton moves an object a distance of one meter in the direction of the force. So that is the definition of the joule, which is the unit of energy. So we can write this mathematically. So one joule is equal to one newton, so that's the force that we're applying, because in the definition we said that one joule is defined as the work done when a force of one newton moves an object a distance of one meter. So we've got one joule is equal to one newton times one meter. So we can therefore define one joule as one newton meter. So this is the definition of one joule in terms of newtons and meters. So we've said n represents the newton and m represents meters. So now let's try applying this equation to an example. A force of five newtons is applied to a wooden block which is moved a distance of two meters. What is the work done on the block? So we've been told that we're applying a force of 5 newtons 
to this block. And the block is moved a distance of two meters in the direction of this force. So now we want to calculate what the work done is. Our first step is to write down the equation for work done. So we've said that work done is equal to the force applied F multiplied by the distance moved in that force, which is S. Our second step is to substitute values into the equation to solve for work done. So the work done is going to be given by the force times the distance. And we've said that the force is equal to 5 newtons, and we know that the distance moved is 2 metres. So this means 5 times 2 is going to give us the work done in joules, so the work done is equal to 10 joules. So now that we've defined work done and we understand what it is and how to calculate it, we're going to look at work done and weight. Another example of a situation where work is done is when a person lifts an object. So for example, this person here is lifting a box and work is done when they lift the box. So if work is done when the person lifts the box, that must mean they're transferring energy to the box. For example, work is done if a person lifts a box from the ground onto a shelf. So we can see here this person is going to bend down, pick up this box and then lift it onto this shelf. And through the process of doing this, work is done on the box. So we say that work is done on the box and that the person is doing work. So we say that work is done by the person because they are applying an upward vertical force to the object and making it move. So in order to lift up the box, the person must apply an upward vertical force. And we're going to call this force F. And we say that work is done because by applying this upward vertical force, the box moves upwards. When the person lifts the box, they transfer energy to the box. So energy is transferred to the box when it's lifted, which is why we say work is done. The box gains energy equal to the work done by the person lifting the box. So when the person lifts the box, they do work. So it's the person that's doing the work here. So when the person does work in order to lift the box, this energy that they're transferring is transferred to the box, so the box gains energy by being lifted. So the work that's done by the person is transferred to the box, so that's the energy it gains. If the box then falls off the shelf, the weight of the box now does work moving the box vertically downwards. So we're saying the box falls off the shelf, so it moves a certain distance downwards. And the force that's actually causing the box to move downwards is its weight. So that's the force that's doing work now. So we're going to say that the work done is given by the weight of the box, because that's the force here that's causing it to move downwards, multiplied by S, which is the distance moved. So now let's try applying this idea to an example. A brick of mass 2.5 kilograms falls due to its weight force through a height of 1.24 meters. What is the work done on the brick from the weight force? So we've been told the mass of the brick, it's 2.5 kilograms. And we've been told that the brick falls because of its weight force. So that's the force that's responsible for the work that's done on the brick. And we've also been told the distance through which it moves. So it moves through a height of 1.24 meters. So we want to know what the work done on the brick is from its weight force. So our first step is to write down the equation for work done. So work done is equal to the force that does the work multiplied by the distance moved. Our second step is to calculate the force due to the object's weight. So in this case, the force that's actually responsible for the work done on the brick is its weight. So we're going to say that the force that causes the brick to move and therefore does work on it 
is the brick's weight. And we know that we can calculate the brick's weight by doing mg, where m is the mass of the brick and g is the gravitational acceleration on Earth. So we've been told that the mass of the brick is 2.5 kilograms, and on average we know that g has a value of 9.81. So this gives us the weight of the brick, and therefore the force due to the brick's weight, as 24.525 newtons. So now our third and final step is to substitute in values for the weight force and the distance moved in the direction of the force in order to calculate the work done on the brick. So the work done on the brick is given by the force responsible for the work done multiplied by the distance moved s. So we found the magnitude of the force that's actually doing work on the brick, that is its weight, which is 24.525 newtons. And then we're going to do this multiplied by the distance moved, which is 1.24 meters. So this gives us the work done as 30.411 joules. And we can write this to three significant figures as 30.4 joules. Hey guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you're looking for an amazing A-level physics resource, join me today in my series of engaging bite-sized video tutorials. Just click the snap revised smiley face and together let's make A-level physics a walk in the park.